It's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you'll know real life. And to help you discover what that truly means, download our free app and you'll have immediate access to the Real Life Television broadcasts, the daily Real Radio podcasts with Pastor Jack's teachings, Words to the Wise daily devotions, access to social connections with Pastor Jack through Facebook and YouTube, tools and resources to grow in Christ, and much more. Download the app today for all your mobile devices. Go to reallifewithjackhibbs.org for more information. Well, in this special installment of Let God Answer Them, we're going to be talking about liberties. And I'm not talking about red, white, and blue flag-waving liberties, though those are important. I'm talking about the liberties that we have as Christians. What does the Bible mean when it tells us that we have liberties in Christ? Do we have liberties to go drink? Do we have liberties to go do pot? Do we have liberties to go have sex outside of marriage? Do we have liberties to do that? If I do those things, will I still be a Christian? Or do I have to pay for those kinds of ramifications if I do do them? What are my liberties? What have I been set free from? That's the key thing. As a Christian, I'm free to live any kind of life I choose. But here's the liberty. I choose to live for Jesus Christ. Think of that. Liberty means this in the Christian context. I don't have to do anything. I am not under the addiction. I'm not under the pressure or the peer pressure to have to do anything that violates the biblical word of God or my conscience. So we need to hear this today because we've got a pressure from the culture trying to tell the church to be like the world. Hey, I've been freed from that garbage. Rather, I want to respond to that in my liberty that I have in Christ to go tell the world out there that there's hope for them, just like there was hope for me and how I walk in that liberty today. So grab your Bibles, stay tuned. I hope you get a lot out of it. God bless you guys. We'll see you on the other side. When we talk about let God answer them, we are to answer the world around us, Christians, with the Bible, not your opinion, not my opinion. If there's something we don't know, or if there's something that the Bible's not clear on, we can say, well, this is my opinion, or this is one reporter's opinion on, on this topic. But I, I got news for you. When in doubt, default to the Bible. I believe that life is basically programmed to be answered by the Bible. Let God answer them regarding our liberties. When I say liberties, I mean things that we as Christians have been set free from. Did you all hear what I just said? When I talk about Christian liberties, as the Bible talks about Christian liberties, it's talking about things that you and I have been set free from. Now, listen, in a crowd this size, it's possible that you're here tonight, but you're not a Christian. So you don't know what it's like to be set free from something. But for us who are Christians, we have been set free from what? Um, for me, because you all want to know what, tell us about you. Um, I never did drugs. I just never thought about doing drugs. I never did pot. I just, all my friends did. I wouldn't do it. I just didn't want to do it. But for about a year and a half, I drank and found out that in that year and a half, I could easily kill myself. Uh, but that was a bad combo because for me, drinking and me being a very violent person, that, that's not a good combo. But what about you? See, the awesome thing is God has set me free from those things, and I don't want to go back to them. What about you? As a Christian, you have your liberation. God's, God may have set you free from, I met a woman not too long ago that comes here now. She was set free from being a prostitute. She came to Christ at this church, and she was a prostitute, and she got delivered and set free, and she's walking with Jesus now. She's dedicated her body to Christ. That's awesome. Only Jesus can give you a brand new life. And that's the liberty I'm talking about. Liberties. Not liberties to do things that you want to do and your flesh wants to do. I mean, let's be honest. You guys look so saintly, and, and you are by faith, but your flesh is screaming to go against the things of God. Your flesh has its fleshly appetites. That's why you read the Bible to slap your flesh around. You read your Bible and it goes... And it keeps your... Your lustful or, or uh, aggressive passions down in check. Listen, when you're not a Christian, you don't have the Bible. You don't have the Holy Spirit in your life and you're out of control. 
There's a world out there, and there's a new life in Christ. And when Jesus saved us, he brought us out of that old life into a whole new life. And he wants all of you, not some of you. So, turn in your Bibles, or mark down if you would, Ephesians 5, 15. Paul said to the church at Ephesus, See then that you walk circumspectly, acrobose, uh, acrobatic. It is a term to walk the wire. So watch this. Uh, what's he say? See that you walk circumspectly, not as a fool. See the word fool? A fool is a person that is like spastic. All over the place. Woo! Wow! So put these two pictures together in your mind. You've got someone who God is now saying, I want you as a believer to walk the line. It's very narrow, right? Remember that guy that walked across the Grand Canyon? What a crazy guy. Anyway, that's amazing. So he's, I can't even walk across the stage like this. Okay? That's the way the Bible says we're supposed to walk, like this. On a very, very narrow path. I didn't make this up. That's what the Bible says. Versus the fool who's all over the place. He can't stand the wire. He can't stand the path. He's a fool. He can't be taught. He won't listen. He's got to do his own thing. You know, I think you ought to stay on the line. Oh, line schmine. I'm going to do my own thing. And he falls into the Grand Canyon. The Bible says be very careful about this because look what he says. Verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Are they not? Can someone say amen? Hello? These are amazing times. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Stop right there. How many of you would like to know what the will of God is for your life? I'm going to raise my hands and my one leg to that. Okay, what is it? Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation. In other words, do not be drunk with wine uh, because uh, it doesn't last. This is God's will. Don't be drunk. Don't, what's the word drunk? Don't be brought under the influence of wine because it doesn't last. God is, God is speaking to us right now, tonight. But, so what should I do? What is God's will? But be filled with the Spirit. Notice, capital S, the Holy Spirit. What's the result of that? What's the result? Verse 19, speaking to one another in psalms, spiritual talk. In hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making a melody in your heart to the Lord, glad. That's a, that's a term for gladness and joy. In fact, it's interesting. All those things right there, a drunk person mimics, but never has. You ever notice a drunk person? Hey, buddy, let's sing a song, man. Let's, let's, uh, well, are we having a great time? No. But listen, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, God does a work in your life that the thing that, the thing that you think you're pursuing by drink to give you some release or satisfaction or a rest never comes. But when God fills you with his spirit and you walk circumspectly with him in life, all those things that you think you're trying to find, that's how you find them. That's how you have them. He gives them to you. So you can, as someone has once said, suck on the bottle, but the reality is the bottle is sucking on you. God gives. And look what it says in verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is that awesome? Listen, these are top heavy issues in people's lives, so we're not going to pull any punches tonight. I'm going to ask you a few simple questions, and you answer them. And for some of you, if you find yourself, are you with me, everybody? If you find yourself having to become very, very defensive about your answer in your mind and complicated in your mind, that's probably the Holy Spirit saying, uh, you should probably maybe stop defending your position and follow me, he would say. <laughs> Okay, so listen, I'm going to just set you up, you think, this is personal for all of us, this is like a self-test tonight, okay? Being a Christian, why should you, why would you smoke pot or drink to get drunk? Why would you do that? Just answer yourself, why? Are you a Christian? Yes. But you think smoking pot's okay? Yes. Or drinking's okay? Yes. Okay, answer yourself silently. Why is it okay? Number two, being a Christian, what Christ-honoring effect 
comes from this practice. This is a requirement of all that we do. Listen, everybody. If listen, do you how many of you like pizza? You like pizza, Richard? Is it can can you or is it possible for you to eat so much pizza that it becomes a sin? I'm not telling you you'll feel good. I'm talking about gluttony. Okay? Of course. If I could sin eating pizza by being a glutton, then how can or what are the effects that would honor Christ come from these practices of being drunk with wine rather than being filled with the Spirit? You know, young people today want to talk about being a Christian and drinking. I wish young people today wanted to talk about being a Christian and being filled with the Holy Spirit more. Why isn't that the topic? among some in the young churches today. Number three, being a Christian, how does this draw you closer to being more like Jesus? He made wine. <laughs> Jesus was at that wedding thing, right? And he made wine. There's no record of anybody being drunk or Jesus himself even drinking it. And you got to remember something. In that world, remember this, don't forget this, there was no Welch's Grape Juice Company. It was, listen, it was considered wine the moment it left the grape. Did you know that? It wasn't strong drink. You ever read that in the Bible? Strong drink? It wasn't strong drink until 12 months later. 12 months and younger, it's called wine. 12 months over, it's called strong drink. Okay, remember that in the Bible. That's what the Bible teaches. Number four, being a Christian, why would your non-believing friends want to be like you if you're like them? In other words, can you drink? Well, I guess you can drink, but you can't get drunk, says the Bible. Two things, predominantly. You can't get drunk, and you can't stumble anyone. Did you know that's mandated in Scripture? Well, I believe my Christian liberty allows me to, to drink. Okay, I'm not going to argue that, but are you stumbling anybody? The Bible condemns that. Do you, get, do you understand that? You say, well, my wife and I like to have a glass of wine at dinner. Well, then have dinner at home. Because if you go to um, something around here to, to, to do that, and there's somebody who sees you at church, and they love the Lord. Maybe they're a brand new Christian and they're an alcoholic and they're getting delivered from that and they look and they see you and they think, oh, what? Hmm, uh, it stumbles them. You see, I can't believe we're talking about this right now. That's why we're talking about this right now. <laughs> Where else are we going to talk about this stuff? This is very, very important stuff. And it gets more fun. It gets more fun or more uncomfortable. It depends on, on where you're at today. <laughs> But uh, listen, I know this almost sounds uh, glib, but how does someone become an alcoholic? How does that happen? It actually happens with tolerating just one drink. That's where it all begins. Just, just know that. I'm not saying you can't, you can't drink. I'm just saying nothing good ever comes out of it. <laughs> Is it a wise thing to do? Well, it's my liberty. Well, just know you're not using the word liberty right <laughs> from the Bible. The question that you have to ask you is, why do you have to do it? Ephesians 5.18, as we read a moment ago, says, do not be drunk with wine. That's pretty strong, don't you think? But be filled with the Spirit. So being brought under the influence by something or altered by something other than the Holy Spirit. The Christian is to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Listen, everybody. Our decision-making. Do you have any classes you need to pick, change, uh, houses to buy or sell, places to go to, whatever? What's the, what's the deal? What? Yeah, boy, I really got to think this one through. Pour me a scotch. <laughs> Chances are you're not going to make the right decision. <laughs> well, it felt good. How'd I get here? <laughs> Listen. It clouds your mind. It, there's a different type of power governing your thinking. Are you with me? You know this. 
The Holy Spirit wants to govern your thinking. He loves you. Jim Beam does not love you. (laughs) Jack Daniels does not love you. Captain Morgan doesn't love you. Who else? (laughs) And well, you you get the picture. God loves you. And he says, hey, I got a great idea. Remember Huey Lewis, I want a new drug. Remember that song? How many of you are are near 100 years of age? (laughs) Huey Lewis. Anybody ever hear of Huey Lewis on the news? I want a new drug, one, one that doesn't make me sick. I remember hearing that song for the first time. I remember where I was driving. And I said, Huey! He couldn't hear me. But I remember where I was at. I said, Huey, you need the Lord. Because everything is done. I don't want, boy, I did this and that didn't work. I, I did this and that didn't work. Did that and that didn't work. I want a new drug, one that doesn't make me sick. Huey, Lewis, you need the Lord. The world is running around, and even there are those in the church that are still running around, flirting with the world, and I don't know what the deal is, trying to look like the world, be like the world. Better to leave the world. It's perishing. It's about ready to implode. Reality check, friends. This is from the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse, NIAA. You can look it up later at your own time, and from the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta. 16 million, alco- six, 16 million plus alcoholics reside in the United States. 16 million. The treatment for them, by the way, is putting a massive uh, strain on our healthcare system. 76 million Americans who do not drink have an alcoholic family member who does. 15, uh, 10 to 15% of Americans 60 years of age or older are alcoholics. Alcoholism is the number one drug problem in the United States. In the last 50 years, more people have died from alcohol-related deaths than World War I and World War II combined. Uh, I have liberty to drink. You think it's smart? Is it a smart thing to do? And by the way, unless somebody's giving you your alcohol or your pot, who's paying for it? With God's money. 25 to 40 percent of hospital beds per day in the United States are from alcohol related issues. 50 percent of traffic fatalities are from alcoholic related accidents. This is weird. Freezing deaths. Did you know more people die from freezing in America per year than from heat? I was surprised to find that out. I thought heat would kill you. Freezing kills people. 20% freezing deaths. Out of freezing deaths, 20% of people who freeze to death in America annually are alcohol-related deaths. That's interesting, huh? 5% of choking deaths are alcohol-related. 50% of all falling down deaths are alcohol-related. Wow. 52% of those who die in a fire are alcohol-related deaths. Listen, the numbers change now. Watch this. 60% of all suicides are alcohol-related. 64% of all murders are alcohol-related. 69% of all drownings are alcohol-related. 72% of assaults and robberies are alcohol-related. 60% of all rapes are alcohol-related. 80% of all criminal court cases annually have an element of alcohol involved. 52% of teenage drivers die from alcohol-related accidents. 77% of high school students say they have drank or, or uh, do drink alcohol. 77%. How many of you have a high, high schooler? Raise your hand. You have a high schooler. 77% of America's high schoolers say that they've drank or they do drink. of all junior high students say they have drank or they do drink. 500,000 children in the United States, ages ranging from 9 to 12 years of age, are alcohol dependent. The National Institute of Alcohol Abuse estimates that 11,000 children under 18 take their first drink in America every single day. The World Health Organization determined that 4% of the worldwide 
untimely deaths are due to alcohol. It's more than terrorism and it's more than AIDS. 59% of all male deaths worldwide, based on a World Health Organization study, die between the ages of 15 and 59 from alcohol use. These are radical numbers. This is tragic. Per capita, per population density, Washington, D.C. is the largest population of alcoholics in one place in America. Washington, D.C., which explains our government. <laughs> Listen, church, we're to be like Jesus. You flirt with stuff like this, and it's not a good end. And people want to, oh, I'm free in Christ to do this. No, you're not. Because if you stumble that brother or that sister, you've, you've made a big mistake, and you have to answer to God. Look, I, look you may be a Christian. That's fine. I'm, I, but just, just know this. It's not good. The church was born by the power of the Holy Spirit, was it not? The church was born by the Holy Spirit. The church is fed right now by the Holy Spirit. And when your life and my life's over, our lives will end by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not, not beer, not wine, not pot. Well, man, dude, I mean, God made the plant. He also made rattlesnakes. <laughs> and might I remind you, we live in a fallen, fallen world? That's post Sin. I don't think Adam and Eve were before the fall doping it up over there with some, you know. No. Jesus said in John 8, 36, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you're free indeed. You say, well, man, I'm having a good time. I'm doing my own thing. Yet you're not free. Yeah, 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 I am. No, 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 watch, watch, watch. Can you lay down your pot and your drinking right now and walk away from it and never touch it again? Uh, and by the way, that may be for any other addiction. Can you put it down and walk away? No, nope, you're not free. You're not free. See, the issue is you're doing what you want, not what God wants. Proverbs 23, 29. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has complaints? Who has caused uh, who has wounds without cause? Listen, to who has redness of eyes? Can I add who's got a hangover? <laughs> those who linger long at the wine. Those who go in search of mixed wine. Do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly. You ever see those commercials when the guy's going to... That's right out of the Bible. Isn't that funny? Yes. Oh, what is this? <laughs> 1849, the Bible, hey, there's a Bible verse for that. Don't look at it when it swirls around smoothly. At last, it bites like a serpent, it stings like a viper. Your eyes will see strange things, and your heart will utter perverse things. Yes, you will be like one who lies down in the midst of the sea. You're drunk, this person's so drunk. Oh, stop moving. Nobody's moving. Stop shaking my bed. No one's touching your bed. The whole room's moving. Or this, listen, or like the one who lies at the top of, a, of the mast of a ship. Whoa. Right? Saying, they have struck me, but I was not hurt. That's because he hasn't woken up yet. It's not morning yet. They have beat me, but I didn't feel it. When shall I awake that I may seek another drink? I know people like this. Do you know people like this? It's, they're bound, and Jesus came to set them free. And people, listen, churches want to teach that it's okay to go. That's how it starts. Don't tell me I'm legalistic. I'm not. I'm just thinking it's, a, it's just a dumb way to go. It's not, a, it's not, it's not good. Galatians 5.13 says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So I've got to ask you in light of all that, are you free? Can you say today that you don't have to do anything that is being presented to you by friends, for example. Your friends are pressuring you, or maybe there's someone pressuring you to have sex, or somebody pressuring you to compromise. Hey, stand strong in the liberty that Christ has set you free in and be free. 
So it's vitally important. I hope that you are free to do what God tells you to do. You know, if I could put a yoke or a burden on you, it would be this. Pursue the filling, the baptism, the renewing strength of the Holy Spirit. Be intoxicated with God. Be controlled by God, not by any silly thing of this world, and live free. Hey, listen, it's our hope that through Jesus Christ, you might have real life. God bless you until we see you next time. The Bible is the single most reliable source for what the future holds, and it challenges us to know what is to come. However, oftentimes we shy away from Bible prophecy and the discussion of end times events as though they aren't a concern for today. The Bible warns us, awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed, Romans 12:11. For your gift of any amount, we want to send you the Awaken series on this convenient USB drive with preloaded MP3 audio and MP4 video messages from Jack Hibbs, Jay Smith, Mark Hitchcock, and more. To order, go online to reallifewithjackhibbs.org or call 877-777-2346 or write to us at P.O. Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history, which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who is searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life each month with a gift of your choosing. In return, our gift to you for becoming a real-life partner, we'd like to send you this Worldview DVD. It's titled, What You Believe Defines You. Call now, 1-877-777-2346. That's 877-777-2346. Or by mail, P.O. Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Or simply go to reallifewithjackhibbs.org. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life.